I've talked to people who've been kidnapped in, in, in all different places around the world, and each person comes up with some sort of thing that gets them through, whether it's getting them through minute by minute or second by second or, or day by day. For me, it was my family. It was knowing that because I had felt so broken after the first time he had raped me, I had felt so like I'd lost all my value and how could anyone accept me back. But after that, moments after that, I realized that there is one thing that will never change and that is my family's love for me. They will always be my family. They will always love me. They will always accept me. So you were saying they were talking about going to New York, going to Boston, and you thought, we got to get back to, to We Utah. have to get back to Salt Lake. There's no way anyone's going to find me if I don't. But there's every reason for them not to go back to Salt Lake. Every reason in the world for that to be the last place for them to ever go. Right, them returning to the scene of the crime. Yeah, yeah. So I thought about it, and I thought about how, how my two captors had manipulated everyone around them to get exactly what they wanted, to justify everything they did. And, I mean, I knew it was wrong, but... I remember just praying, if this works this one time, I will never do this again. <laughs> so I remember turning around and facing my captors and, and just telling them, oh, I just, I have this feeling and I, I know that God would never speak to me, but I, I know he'll speak to you because you're, you're his servant, you're practically his best friend. Could you please ask him if we're supposed to go back to Salt Lake? Because this feeling, it just won't leave me. And, and this is just crazy coming from me, but, but if you ask him, I know he'll tell you. And so he did end up asking, and, and that was how it was decided we'd go back to Salt Lake. There was a, a time when I think you were in a library and a police officer approached you and, and, and this man who had taken you. Um, did, what, what was going through your mind then? As soon as we saw him approaching, I was sitting next to Barzi. As soon as the policeman flashed his badge, because he was just dressed as a civilian, she immediately clamped her hand down onto my leg. And in my 14-year-old mind, I just knew that if I did anything or said anything, that I would be killed. And then they'd go after my family. So I sat there just praying and hoping and just desperate that he'd recognize me, that somehow he'd save me. And when he turned around and walked away being... 100% convinced that it wasn't me. I mean, it felt like I was being kidnapped all over again. I mean, it felt like I was being stolen from my family again and being ripped away from my life and my happiness. Tell, tell me about the day that freedom finally came when some police officers approached. Mm -hmm. What happened? I remember all these cars pulled up and then the policemen jumped out of their cars and they came over and surrounded us and started asking questions and my two captors they kept giving the answers and the officers started to ask me questions and there had been a whole backstory prepared by my two captors that they told me I should say if I was ever questioned and so I started giving those answers because they were standing right next to me I was scared I was petrified and then one of the officers he said to his other officer, she's, she's just too scared. We need to separate her from them. She can't answer with them mm -hmm. right there. So they separated me and they started asking me questions. And at first, I was still really scared. I kept giving the answers that I'd been told to give. And then finally, one of the officers, officers said, well, if you're Elizabeth Smart, your family misses you so much. And they love you so much and they have never given up hope on you the entire nine months you're gone. Don't you want to go back home to your family? And it was just at that point that I felt like, well, no matter what the consequences are, I don't care. I want to go home. So what did you say? I told them that I was Elizabeth Smart. What was that feeling like to say your name? I, I met, you, you probably had not said your name for, for a long time. It was. Scary. Scary. Yeah. It was scary because I didn't know if they thought I had done something wrong or, I mean, if they thought I'd run away or, I didn't know what they were thinking. Did you know that your family was looking for you? Did you know? Because I know you had been told by, by your captors that mm. nobody was looking for you anymore. By that point, I didn't think. I thought maybe my family would still look for me, but nobody else. Mm. 
because it had just been so long. And as far as I knew, nothing had been found. It was like I had just disappeared. Well, I've talked to your dad a lot over the years, and I remember one of the things that, that he kept stressing, because every time a, a child is returned, we often go to your dad and talk to him. And, and he says that it's important to let the person who has survived and come back in their own time to talk about what's happened. Um, do you think that's true? Being with my family, it just it couldn't have been any better. I, I mean, I couldn't have asked for a better dream come true or, or wish come true, wish granted. But then to have so many people speculate on what happened and what I must be going through and, and just so many, well, lies being mm. told. It was, it was hard. I didn't like it. I don't think anybody likes having people guess at what they're going through. Privacy is so sacred. And any time a victim is returned, a survivor is found and rescued, privacy is one of the greatest gifts we can give them because if they decide to share, that's up to them and they will come forward. I talked uh, a couple months ago to Sean Hornbeck, who was also abducted and, and returned finally. And one of the things he said has always stayed with me. He said, this is something that happened to me. It's not who I am. Does that resonate with you? Absolutely. I, I'm not just that girl that was kidnapped. That happened to me, but I'm so much more than just that girl that was kidnapped. And your life now? I couldn't be happier. I have been married for a year and a half. I mean, I've got you a wonderful- in Hawaii, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, couldn't get better than that, <laughs> right? I've got great dogs, I've got a great family, I mean, I couldn't be happier.